A reversible reaction is where the reactant A goes to product B, um, but then a back reaction causes B to go uh, to A. And we can include this kind of a reaction with the kinetics shown here, where we've got the uh, rate of A decaying to B according to this first order decay reaction, but then B is decaying to or, or reacting to produce A according to this reaction. So the rate of change of A is increasing in response to this reaction from B. Okay, so we can add these two together and we get the overall rate uh, w negative here causing A to, to decrease and then positive sign here where the concentration of A is increasing due to this reaction from B. So in this case we have two unknowns and we need another equation and so we simply use this one where the reaction rate for B is equal to the negative of the reaction rate from A. So when A decays then B is produced. So we can include these reactions uh, in our model. Uh, over here I set up a model that was uh, essentially the same model that I described earlier where we use the transport of dilute species physics and we have a square geometry shown here and we put in uh, two species and their reactions are shown here and what I did like last time I gave them names and those reactions are shown up here under this list of variables. So I have AB reaction and BA reaction. So the AB reaction, it has this decay of A and then it has the production of A from B. And the BA reaction is just the negative of the AB reaction. So this is really just uh, writing down what we saw on the, on the PowerPoint slide. And then we need to have initial conditions. They're shown here. The reaction constant, the forward reaction constant, and the reverse reaction constant. And then th this ratio of uh, the reaction constants is a way to predict what the, um, the equilibrium concentration of A is. So we'll put that in there and use that later. So if we go here to the physics, we have initial values and I put in the uh, constants that we're controlling up here in the definitions and the reactions are shown here and so we go and run it and here are the results here's the concentration of A it decreases and flattens out and B uh, increases and flattens out and you can see that it looks very much like the first order reaction but the difference is that in the first order reaction, A decays completely down to zero and B goes up to one. But in this case, uh, A decays uh, to 0.1 and B to 0.9. And that's because of this back reaction. The red line here is what we predict from the, um, from the analytical solution. And you can see that it matches the analytical solution um, quite well.